is engineering a good career? How do we define good? Uh, engineering is a great career if you want to solve problems or if you want to get creative, if you want to travel the world, if you want to help people. How can STEM subjects be used? Well, I like to say together, but I also like to consider two main ways. The first is for creativity and for expression. Often we talk about STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts and maths, but you can use STEM subjects together to create things, to make things, to express yourself um, and to really you know, get those creative juices flowing. Secondly, STEM subjects can be used to solve problems. And you'll be familiar with this in school work, you know, the person that turns up at the supermarket with loads of pineapples and wants to put more pineapples into their trolleys. But there are all manner of problems that we have in the world that STEM subjects could be applied to to help solve. Now, when you think about the future, maybe five, 10, 20, even 30 years from now, what do you imagine? Well, STEM skills are the things that we need to be able to create some of these eventualities. Why are STEM subjects male-dominated? Uh, they're male-dominated because of a social norm, a societal norm that we've established uh, through generations of erasure of the true history we have within STEM. So when we consider stereotypes, when we consider characters, when we consider the stories that we hear and the histories that we can recall most easiest, most of them to do with STEM surround a male character, a male person. And so it's ended up being really dominated because we almost can't imagine what it would be to be female or any other gender and involved in STEM. And so this is something that goes across media, across schooling, across our social interactions, across the decisions that we make, but also the decisions that are made around our careers uh, and decisions that we might make for the careers of others. So if you can't imagine that a woman might be in STEM, then would you recruit her? Would you promote her? Can art students do engineering? In a word, yes. I'm actually on the council at the Royal College of Art, and this is something that they've had across all of their curriculums um, for a while now. Artists can be engineers and engineers can be artists, and they are. And some of the best engineering that we see comes from artists. Some of the best art that we see comes from engineers. In fact, there's a fantastic uh, piece of research that's been done a couple times that says that you're much more likely to be a Nobel Prize winning scientist if you've engaged with the arts as part of your upbringing. Now, I love to talk about STEAM, which is science, technology, engineering, arts, and maths. And when we think about how art might be interacted into the middle of these STEM subjects, I think the biggest thing is around expression and around design. How does something look? How does that make people feel? And how do you add or remove from that with your knowledge of STEM subjects? So there's lots of different examples that we might see in this in terms of design, whether it's 3D printing and 3D modelling, where we're having to artistically consider uh, and, and engineer around and use the mathematics or to create something that's fairly usable in 3D, whether it's virtual reality, where we're able to transport someone somewhere else that may or may not exist. And so we can use artistic license across the graphics, across the music, across the sounds, across all the different senses that are being used there. Well, there's lots of different ways that technology can help the environment, whether it's reducing uh, or making more efficient our use of resources, whether it's helping us track different things that might be happening in the environment or track different resources that might be affecting the environment. Technology can also be used to disseminate information about our relationship to the environment and ways that we can better steward and treat the environment. How can technology reduce inequality? Now we've got to remember technology is a tool, it's not just magic. Uh, or excitement. And so when we think about inequality and what drives inequality, this is things that are systemic. This is norms, this is notions, this is rules, this is regulations. Uh, and this is, a, you know, it's one of those things that we have across society. And so technology is a fantastic tool that you're able to fashion uh, to maybe counter some of those things. And so when we want to reduce inequality, there are things like access to resources that can be better distributed through good use of technology. There's things like access to skills and building competencies, which again, technology is fantastic at doing. And then there's also access to information, which often is a big driver of inequality. And this is information on uh, those who are in uh, 
disadvantaged uh, environments, but also information on what the drivers are for those inequality. And having better information, having quality information and quality data allows you to make better decisions, which if you're able to do that at a systemic level, you can then reduce inequality. Are engineers in demand? Yes, they are. We've had a skills gap now for a while. And when you consider all the different parts of life that require engineering to solve problems and get creative, you can imagine that the normal routes that we have, the traditional routes, the routes that you might be familiar with, are not going to be enough to ensure that we have enough engineers to solve those problems and go into those fields. It's why we have things like apprenticeships now coming through for all the new engineering innovations that need more people to then staff them and be part of those work. Thank you.